Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi everyone, we're back again with the latest Sazeng news and here they are. Myanmar army engaged in torture and mass killings. The United Nations said Myanmar's military has engaged in systematic human rights violations, some of them amounting to war crimes and crimes against humanity. The spokeswoman for the Office of the UN High Commissioner for the Human Rights, Ravina Shamdasani, declared that security forces have shown a flagrant disregard for human life using airstrikes and heavy weapons on populated areas and deliberately targeting civilians. Um, yes, um, we have just released a new report. Many victims were shot in the head, burned to death, arrested arbitrarily, tortured or used as human shield she said in a statement on the report which urged meaningful action by the international community. Bachelet said the appalling breadth and scale of violations of international law suffered by the people of Myanmar demand a firm, unified and resolute international response. In addition, the UN report affirmed it was based on interviews with scores of victims of abuse and witnesses whose accounts were corroborated with satellite imagery, verified multimedia files and open source information. The army has met a sustained resistance in the countryside of militias allied with ousted government and the UN report said troops has carried out mass killings in the Sagain region with some victims found dead with their hands and feet tied. At least 1, people in Kaya State, burnt bodies of women and children were found, some in positions indicating they have tried to escape and were burned alive. The report found detainees were tortured during interrogation, including suspension from ceilings, electrocution, injection of drugs, and some subjected to sexual violence, including rape. The junta has in the past years called it the UN and its independent expert for interference and what it calls reliance on distorted information from partisan groups. The report also said at least 543 people had been killed for their perceived support of the military government. Hundreds of people evacuated because of Merapi's spews volcanic lava and ash in Indonesia. The Country Disaster Mitigation Agency, BNPB, said Indonesia's Merapi volcano erupted overnight and sending hot lava and ash down its slopes and prompting over 250 residents in the surrounding area to evacuate. In addition, Indonesia's geological agency said on Twitter that Merapi spewed hot clouds, a mixture of ash and volcanic materials, that float 5 km or 3.1 miles down its slopes between near midnight. Potential dangers include more lava flows and hot clouds of firms warning people living within 7 km of the volcano to keep away. Indonesia has more volcanoes than any other country that located on the Pacific Rim of Fire and Merapi last violently erupted in 2010, killing more than 350 people. Singapore police stopped the traffic and usher otters across the street. Police on guard at Singapore's presidential palace stopped traffic to let a group of otters cross the busy street. Wong Yi Kang, who was on a double-decker bus at around 4 p.m. in front of Istana the palace, filmed the lodged being ushered across the five-lane street as drivers waited. In other way, the bus stopped at Istana and I thought the president or some VIP was coming out, but it turned out to be otters. The city-state's efforts, anti-pollution and reforestation have helped otters to make a comeback in recent years and are now common sight in urban areas, but the comeback is not without problems. And there have been incidents of otter attacks to reports of otters eating expensive koi fish in ponds in people's homes and of them swimming in pools. Government issues subsidies amid fuel prices hikes in Philippines.
the Philippine government pumped subsidies for affected sectors after soaring fuel prices in the country had put mounting pressures on local people's livelihood. A worker of a service station in the capital of Manila said the gas prices began to go up at the beginning of the year and have been on the rise for 11 weeks. Albin says the prices have been on the rise for 11 weeks, up to 30 to 40 percent. We lost a lot of customers as drivers do not come after the price hike, said a worker of a gas station. One driver, most of his income now goes to pay for fuel, and many Filipinos have felt the brunt of the rising fuel cost. And one of local residents said that life is hard at the diesel price roses. We spent all our income on oil and have no money left to bring home. The sharp rise in gas prices has brought up the operating cost of the transportation industry. In order to alleviate the impact of rising fuel prices, the Philippine government had begun to issue fuel subsidies to the transportation section and more than 370,000 passenger drivers will receive 6,500 pesos per person. In addition, the Philippine Department of Budget and Management has allocated 3 billion pesos, about 57 million of US dollars, to the Transportation and Agriculture Department to tide over the current difficulties. Thailand lays out for a banquet to celebrate its Elephant's Day. <laughs> Thailand held a fruit and fish table banquet for 57 elephants at the Botanical Park to celebrate Elephant Day. The feast is commonly observed in various parts of the country, but due to the pandemic and economic woes that have come with it, an elaborate celebrations were few this year. At the Nong Nok Tropical Garden in Chomburi Province, however, elephants were treated to two tons of fruits and vegetable artistically laid out on an 8 meter wide table. Kampun Tan Sacha, the president of Nong Nok Garden, said Elephant Day is held every year, celebrating elephants as a source of national pride and cultural identity for Thailand throughout its history. In the past were used for labor, transport in battlefield triumphs by warriors and kings. Nowadays, they are no longer used for heavy-duty jobs such as logging. This has been their life. We train them, they raise among us, we give them food, so now they have a homely life. He add more, that homely life, we have to support them, so now they go to tourist attraction place, they are riding elephants and all this, this part of their life. The wild elephant is the one that in the jungle, and we cannot send all these homely elephants back to the jungle, and they will all die. The domesticated elephants have had few visitors due to the pandemic and Kampon says they are happy to see people when they do come to visit. <laughs> South Korea's president-elected vowed to open dialogue with Pyongyang. South Korea's president elected Yoon Seok Yeol vowed to build strong defense in the midst of rising North Korean threat, but said he would be open to dialogue with Pyongyang. Yoon vowed to forge even closer ties with the United States, South Korea's only treaty ally, in the face of increased missile activity by North Korea and competition with China, which is the South's largest trading partner. <laughs> The former Prosecutor General also pledged to create a more level economic playing field and at the center of the voter frustration that proper yun to victory are soaring housing prices and growing inequality. In his first official event, he made a visit to the National Cemetery and paid respect to the Patriot spirit there. And that's the whole news for today. Have a nice day, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon.